Hello, Mind Freak. Uh, sorry I got only just a headshot today. My webcam's being a little freaky here. Let me try to get this back. Uh, there we go. Okay, so um, I've got a couple of thoughts for you on uh, the testing. Good work. Um, however, technically speaking, now this is the complicated part, and I'm going to explain how this works. Um, on your, on you had said on the video that your goal was that you were going to try to move the thing to the left. You had pre-selected on your test the goal of moving the the bar to the right. You had didn't, you didn't click the left. Uh, you didn't click the uh, thing marked left before you started the test. So these are the perspective of the test goal. Um, from the um, from the point of the Formulab website, you had picked the goal of right beforehand. So as your records show, it will show you as being statistically significant on Psi hitting. Uh, however, um, considering that you actually uh, said that your goal was to the left and you ended up constantly going to the right, you got what's known as Psi missing. Now the thing is, the reason I say it's Psi missing or Psi hitting in this particular case is because of the fact that you had two statistically significant runs and um, and your other two runs were positive, so you are about so you um, those on your cumulative Z score uh, or your cumulative um, basically your cumulative score are um, statistically significant but um, above chance. Um, visa, well, either way, they're statistically significant. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to um, clarify something for you. When it said 1.67 standard deviations or what have you for the one in 20 chances, um, the site is calculating. Um, your z-score correctly, but it is calculating your um, it is calculating your probability p1 tail. Under a p2 tail setting, you would still be statistically significant, just a little bit less so, um, at least cumulatively, cumulatively overall. So um, again, based on your scores, um, assuming that all uh, assuming that it's not just an anomaly by chance, you know, uh, statistically, you know. Statistically significant results happening, um, you know, uh, that you know that it isn't just uh, statistically significant results happening by chance. The same possibility I've admitted for my own pro for my own results. Um, it would say that you have a genuine capability for retropsychokinesis. Um, I should elaborate a little bit. Um, what the test you were working with, all that random data was off a radioactive decay random number generator. They had a sample of 85 krypton that would uh, decay um, by shooting off alpha particles into 85 rubidium. Uh, at a you know, and that has a known half life, but um, each the each uh, amount of time that a uh, that um, that say an each individual um, atom uh, would fall off uh, would decay is indeterminate. You know that's just within the individual sample. So the thing is, by affecting the radio of a radioactive decay on a micro level, you can affect the random numbers that draw off that are based on it. From that, um, but what, but here's the unique thing. Not only are they just true random number uh, that are coming off this radioactive decay source, you know, interpreted by computer, but the thing is that they are also all pre-recorded. This is stuff that's already ha all happened and nobody's observed yet. So you are the first person to observe it, and that's where the ki that's where the interesting bit comes in about retropsychokinesis, is that you are in fact attempting to observe, um, you are attempting to affect random numbers which have already been recorded. I.e., you are attempting to tr uh, try to influence their they're biased away from randomness back when they're first being recorded, so backwards through time. So you have the capability, um, apparently, like I do, to be able to stretch your, uh, to be able to stretch backwards through time. Now, I will admit, um, I was a little concerned with the third run there at the beginning because it looked like it was going to go into the negatives, and I did kind of hope you had statistically significant data. So um, at that moment, I tried to um, focus a little bit of my intention on the third experiment. Um, that was the three of the four, the third of the four runs where you got that uh, 25 and every one in every 15 chances. I was just a little concerned there, so I tried to aid you a little bit. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was a combination of both of us or just you or what have you. But anyway, um, cumulatively, um, in your own right, you you are statistically significant either way. So um, anyway, just just to let you know. Uh, but anyway. Um, I digress. The bottom line is, though, is that this particular experiment is unique in that it's trying to research going backwards through time. Uh, you know, uh, taking you know, taking a uh, pit, you know, um, you know, being able to peek back at stuff that's already happened and reach back into the past. Now, I know this may sound a little bit um, weird or um, you know, contrary to the laws of physics, but bear in mind that there are a couple of interpretations of quantum mechanics which actually would allow for this. Um, one of which, of course, is the obvious Copenhagen interpretation. If you observe the past, or if you observe uh, quantum phenomena in general, it will collapse. Now that depends. Now the whole point about observa uh, the wave state will collapse. Now the whole thing about observation. There's some debate about whether it's just it, whether it's instrumentation or whether there's a human element in the observation that requires it. Um, 
there is another uh, format called the transactional interpretation, which is that informa some information is sent to the future, other information is sent back to the past, and the two collapse into a single wave function that we see, which basically means that um, you could be a transaction point. You know, uh, you could be providing the energy um, for the transaction point from the future, the information back to the past, and the pre-recorded data as it's being observed by you is that information going to the future, and the two of them are collapsing. Either way, again, a time reversal phenomenon. Uh, and as for the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, um, again, that would be entirely possible too. Um, universes are constantly splitting off. You're just deciding which one you want to go into by um, by looking backwards at the relevant data point, the pre-recorded point, and um, at the point where it was pre-recorded, and selecting, saying, I want to go to the statistically significant universe as opposed to the non-statistically significant. So anyway, there's basically everyone, and um, not to mention that there's been Schrodinger's, um, sorry, not Schrodinger's equations, um, there are solutions for both Schrodinger's equations and um, James Maxwell's uh, magnetic field equations, which um, do allow for backwards in time travel. Now, note this is only purely, th purely theoretical right now, but um, if string theory and the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics are vindicated, um, and not to mention the fact that if Ronald Millet's work uh, in trying to design an actual time machine um, using uh, bending space time or even the quantum mechanical uh, differential beam splitter uh, time machine is, is found to be true, um, I mean, there's plenty of mathematics and, you know, scientific theory right now which could show that uh, physical time travel is actually possible if we design a machine. So a quantum-based uh, form of observation uh, working backwards in time might not be that far-fetched, um, especially, uh, you know, paranormal or not. So just a little uh, thought for heads up. Um, I hope this video explains a little bit about what you were experiencing. Um, in short, um, assuming all the controls were taken care of at that particular test, I'd say that you have a pretty good shot that you are, um, at least for that at least for that period right there, for those four runs, your cumulative odds are statistically significant. Uh, if you could give me the username that you used, uh, if you could give me the username or the link that you used at Formulab, I can go check up your results and your cumulative, and then I can run the exact odds uh, cumulatively through chance uh, using, the statistical, using the statistical significance calculators, and I can give you your, uh, your actual full results back and explain everything for you in greater detail. But... Um, you know, barring uh, statistical, barring statistical anomaly, i.e., statistical significance by chance, and assuming all the proper controls have been worked out there, and that it is, you know, a truly random source. Well, it is because it's radioactive decay, uh, and that you know it, it acts truly like a chance pertaining to calculation. Then uh, you have um, evidence of possibly being, uh, of possibly having an ability known as retro psychokinesis, which is um, the capability to influence micro events backwards through time, um, much like apparently I do. So, anyway, I, uh, again, thanks for the vid and for the video response. Um, I hope you enjoy. Anybody else who's watching this, uh, they can see my original one, my current side test results with my uh, results posted up in the summary on that video. And if they want uh, it results on my uh, telepathy experiments, they can go see a look into the psychic update series um, and ask me for further uh, details on the design protocol and stuff like that and how I properly controlled variables and the updated protocol I have that I'm wanting Michael Shermer to test me with. And um, if you want to see my clairvoyance results, uh, you can either see the Underwear Magician ESP test or uh, request uh, or message me with your email address, and I will email you with the current results of my um, open uh, blind clairvoyance test, which is roughly the, um, the no sender version of the telepathy test I was working with, or the closed deck feedback um, playing cards one, which was actually a replication of the Underwear Magician ESP test. So... Uh, and of course, don't forget to um, watch my freak's video f on his psychokinesis results. So, that having been said, I hope you all enjoyed that. And um, yeah, so uh, mind freak, I hope that is enlight. I hope that uh, clears up some issues for you. Again, don't forget to give me your email, uh, the username you used at formulab.com, so I can calculate the results in full for you. And um, as for everyone else, um, keep watching the videos. And remember, further research is needed on all of this. But it is possible, more likely than not, that certain capabilities, i.e. telepathy, clairvoyance, and micropsychokinesis, are more likely than not, given the, current, uh, given the current scientific research that is out there. But again, further research is needed. There's been a lot of flaws in both the believer and the skeptic sides uh, in terms of research, and we need to straighten those up and uh, attempt further replications before we get a definitive answer as to whether or not psychic phenomena actually exist.